Hello, and you're all, as Sarah said, extremely welcome to the Foundry. Um, it's wonderful to have so many businesses in so many different, from so many different parts of uh, Europe and even further afield represented today. And so may I also join Sarah in extending a very hearty welcome to you. Uh, and this is our inaugural Export at Google event here in the Foundry. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a couple of minutes. But first of all, the theme. The theme that I'm going to talk a few minutes about is driving growth in challenging times. Okay, so we've, we've faced challenging times in a lot of European countries in particular in the last, in the last four or five years. Um, we've seen even a, a, um, some of the issues that, that have been worldwide, for example, what's, what's affected the US and even, the, even some of the recovery around the rest of the world is being slowed down by things like China's growth slowing down a little bit. So the point is that businesses are looking for growth and businesses are looking for opportunities to really see where they can add value. And this is where export really comes in. So what I'm going to be talking about today is really how export can help to drive this particular agenda. First of all, though, and just to follow on one thing that Sarah was just saying there, we have a very multinational audience. Do encourage you to download the app because you'll basically have access to people from about 30 different European countries. Just to give you some, just to, just to give you some stats, we have about 100 people from the UK and Ireland, and you're all extremely welcome. We have approximately 30 from the Scandinavian countries. We have about 30 from uh, Eastern and Southeastern Europe. Uh, a similar amount from, uh, from Southern Europe, Italy, Spain, etc. Uh, and then we have about 75 to 80 from the German-speaking countries. So this is a very, very widespread audience. One of the things that you've always told us, or in feedback that we get after these events, is that networking is extremely important. It's not necessarily always what you say when you're coming to the event, but after the event, people often register that. So please do take this opportunity. There are tons of businesses here that, 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 that have either been through things that you've been through or are going things through, and, and you can spend some time learning from them, we hope. And just to reinforce what Sarah said, the networking and the networking breaks are very important parts of what we're doing here today. Just to give you a sense of who's here in the audience, we have about 60% of you are from the retail industry, about another quarter from the travel industry, but equally importantly, we have representatives from the software industry, gaming, industry uh, and, and um, internet security and a lot of other areas too. I was just chatting outside in the lobby to a few guys from a healthcare company earlier on. So lots of different representation here and we're going to try and make the agenda cover as much of that as we, as we possibly can. I mentioned some of the things that, that you said to us when we surveyed you about coming to the event. So some of it we may well have expected, things like how to set up an international AdWords campaign or looking at market trends and insights. But for the first time in the Foundry, we've actually, we have more external speakers than internal Google speakers. Because export is a kind of an overall business solution. And whilst we'd like to think that AdWords alone will solve that problem, of course it won't. There are a number of other parts. So when I go through the agenda in a second, you'll actually see all the interconnecting pieces. We're, we're really trying to answer the full, the full export conundrum here. Day one of the agenda really emphasizes that. So after myself and my, and my colleague from the UK, Martijn, talk to you about uh, uh, this from a Google perspective, um, we actually have our external speakers who think are going to bring, bring a really valuable perspective. Martijn, um, Martin is going to be talking about top tips when launching your e-business abroad. We're going, to, we're going to be talking, we're going to be hearing from eBay and Anthony into insights in terms of payment platforms, overcoming logistical challenges, including a Q&A with with John, and then, we're, and then we're going to wrap up today's session with customer stories from successful exporters. So we have Andreas from Big Point, uh, Maxim from Kapersky, Robin from, C, uh, for, he's the CEO of Exploring Ireland, and Shona, who's an export consultant, has worked for Tesco, Betfair, and others, more of which later. But a lot of different opinions here. We recognize that as Google that we can't solve the problem of export all on our own, but, but, but we can bring, if we, if we bring our partners with us, a really valuable perspective. Day two, then, is much more of a breakout session. So we, we welcome you here. You'll be pleased to hear, not at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, at 9.30. This is la allowing you for extended networking time this evening. If those of you who haven't been to, to, the, uh, to the Guinness Brewery previously, it's a very enticing and attractive place. And you may well linger there longer this evening. So we factored that into the agenda. And then, we have, then we're, we're going to hit you hard with tools and resources first thing in the morning uh, from Carl, from our, from our global expansion team. And then we're then going to move into expanding into Eastern Europe, if that's of interest, or expanding into Asia. And then we're going to follow up with one-to-ones based on, based on your individual interests. So we're hoping that a lot of the different parts of this agenda, both from a networking with one another and with your Google counterparts here, will, will prove to be extremely valuable. 
First of all, why am I standing here? So I have a, a background uh, in, in assisting businesses uh, go global. But in particular, it struck me when I joined Google about three years ago that actually it was one of Google's main USPs. I'm very fortunate to work in the German market, and I, I work with some of the largest retailers there. And some of the, and some of the issues and, and, and challenges really started to fascinate me. It struck me actually that it was where Google was, was a really great partner with an awful lot of our organizations. So the reason why the, my personal story, why I'm standing up here today, is that I really passionately feel this is a solution that many of you turn to us for. And we're absolutely delighted that so many of you have made the journey here today. More importantly, though, than what I think, it's, of course, what everybody else here thinks. Export can mean very different things to you. So export may well mean you're, for example, a German customer just going into Austria and maybe the German-speaking part of Switzerland for the first time. Or you're an English company maybe exporting to Northern Ireland, for example. Same language targeting in a, very, in a familiar and safe um, uh, country that neighbors yours. You may, however, though, be uh, an entity operating in Central Europe and you want to go to Southern Europe, and there may be very different language. You may be then leaving the, the uh, EU, and there may be currency issues that you have to overcome there. Or you may be a global advertiser, uh, and you may be operating in 150 plus countries. And of course, export will mean something different to you. So the way that we think about this in Google is quite simple. We, we break it down into three different buckets. The first bucket is advertisers who are completely new to export. And they require a slightly different solution. So this is, this is obviously taking, taking that first step moving into doing export for the first time or really expanding uh, into export. However, I would say that probably most of you here are not in that bucket. Most of you here are probably in what we call footprint expansion. Footprint expansion is when you're already exporting, but, and say you're in, for example, you're a British company and you're in Germany and France, but you want to go and, and um, enter all of the southern European markets. And so you're in two markets currently, two export markets currently, and you wanted to go into another five. That's what we call footprint expansion. That's a lot of the advice that we give to our advertisers to actually do that, because a lot of you, as I said, are already exporting. There's a third pillar, too, is when you're not planning on going to any more markets, but you want to optimize your performance, either for ROI or for scope expansion in one of those markets. So, so you're already operating in France. You're quite happy. You're a German advertiser. You're quite happy that, that, that you're not going to expand anymore, but you want to expand your remit and your footprint. And so when you're thinking about that, and you're thinking about engaging with Google. Think about new to export, footprint expansion, and then incremental. And Google has solutions for, for, all of the, for all of these different areas. Carl, in particular, tomorrow morning, will talk about some of our tools and resources in this particular area. For both footprint expansion and for uh, incremental sales, we have a team called the Global Expansion Team. We've just recently doubled the size of that team, and now we have about 75 people working for you guys on translation and optimization, going to pretty much every single country in the world. We have about 95% language coverage. Okay, so, so, so the point is, as you make more strides into, into this space, we're also making those investments as well, because we see that it's good for both of us. Some of our resources I, I just touched upon there. So I mentioned export, export strategists. So this is our global expansion team. This is a team of people designed to help you internationalize, be it new to export, expanding your footprint, or incremental sales. You may be familiar with, with some of Google's research in this space from Consumer Barometer, our mobile planet, about, about how you can use mobile to go international, some of the industry insights, and of course, also some of the country insights there. And most importantly at all, particularly from a strategist and, and, from a, and from an AdWords perspective, some of the tools that help you identify opportunities. We have been working very, very hard to try and make these tools even better. And you're going to see some really nice stuff tomorrow from, from Carl. So this is, I suppose, is kind of, if you're asking, well, so where's Google's skin in the game? This is our skin in the game. We want to put a lot of resources to help you grow your businesses with export. And you know this, right? But, but maybe it's a lens that, that like, certainly we in Google don't, haven't always talked about as much as, we, as much as we will be doing in the next two days. There are an awful lot of traffic, an awful lot of activity. And we touch, we touch an awful lot of people. And of course, I would imagine most of you here in this room are performance advertisers. Um, but actually, um, we also have a strong branded proposition. And YouTube is a very interesting way to internationalize the brand globally. And of course, now mobile. I know Anthony later on will be touching upon mobile payments because this is actually something that was specifically asked about, like how do we internationalize through mobile, through mobile payments? And of course, we, we, we are delighted to do business with an awful lot of advertisers. So enough about, enough about Google. Now I, I want to I pivot and just talk a little bit about some of the opportunities. 
Now, it's often, I'm now going to throw a question out to the audience. I expect to be, to be, I expect to be met with, with, uh, with um, a blank silence, which is absolutely fine. If you want me to die up on stage here, there's no problem at all. But why don't, why don't we just try this? I'm now going to throw something out, and maybe then you can just maybe see if anyone, if anyone has an opinion on it. So I just wanted to get a perspective here. How much that you guys think that global searches have grown from 2011 to 2013? By what percentage? Any guesses from the audience? 50? 100? 500. 500, I wish they'd grown by 500. <laughs> Who's that man? <laughs> Anybody else? OK. Actually, the first guess was actually, was actually the closest. They've grown by approximately 60% for, for the full year 2011 to full year 2013. Another thing, actually, and I'll show you the slide in a second. Anybody know roughly the amount of searches that are local searches? I, I'm, a, I'm a German customer. I'm searching on a .de site. And how many are international searches? So I'm searching on a site that could be global. Does anyone know roughly what that, what that split is? Anyone hazard a guess? 40, 60, thank you. 80, Anybody? 25. 80, 20. Let me go on to the next slide and put everybody out of, the, out of their misery. And thank you for interacting, actually. I feel a little bit, I feel as if we're developing a bond here. So in terms of, um, in terms of um, uh, this, is, this is for the top retailers, about 60% of all searches are local searches. So, so that, that, for example, is a German advertiser or a British advertiser operating in their own area, okay, operating in their own territory. But 40% are what's known as global, so outside of that particular area. And I've just actually noticed that you guys can't see the graph here, but I hope you, 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 can, see, you can see the numbers. And 60% is the amount of growth there. The opportunity is international, and the opportunity is huge. I guess it's why everybody is here today. Secondly, it's not too late to be early, OK? It's not too late to be early. Why do, why do I say that? This, this, again, is a retail study, but actually this is something that's analogous for many different businesses here. There's probably about a 25 billion, according to OCNC, our research partners, about 25 billion current e-commerce e value coming out of these six countries here. Not every country that's, here, that's uh, here in the room, but if you'll bear with me, a reasonably representative sample. At a compound annual growth rate of 30%, this is a $100 billion plus business in 2020. Enormous opportunity for us, okay, for us, for us both. If I then add in, there are huge opportunities to win in your neighbor's back garden, in your neighboring country back garden. Again, referring to, 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 some, to some research done by our partners at OCNC. If I take, for example, uh, Germany, which is extremely, extremely close to here, this is based on retail searches, the top 1,500 um, searches. And you can see German businesses winning an awful lot in France. And France-Germany relations are obviously, uh, are obviously very, very good because French customers are very willing to buy from German organizations. Look, for example, at the amount of US, uh, US into the UK, just under a billion dollars. But actually look at the UK into the US, just over a billion dollars. A lot of that is driven by, by the British strength in fashion and apparel in particular. And some of the other, other opportunities here, UK into France, my point is that there are some big opportunities here, but these, we're, only really, we're only really scratching the surface here. There are an awful lot of opportunities here. What about, what about Germany into the, into the UK? Germany is the export Weltmeister of overall trade, if, if you look at the difference between imports and exports. But actually, relatively, there is a huge opportunity for German businesses to be winning more in the UK, in UK auctions and for the hearts and minds of UK consumers. Some other opportunities here, we see, uh, we see some of the Scandinavian countries here aggregated here, just, for, just, just so we can fit it all on the slide, and a huge amount of business being done there in Germany. My point is that this, this is publicly available data, we'll, we'll be sharing this. My point is that there are enormous opportunities to continue to win and expand your business. Remember, the footprint here, that we're or, the, or, or the idea that we're talking about here is winning in these challenging times. We think that there are enormous opportunities here to actually do so. Um, in, in order to continue to win. And I also wanted to bring this. So we asked also whether we were optimal or, or whether your businesses were optimized for your potential customers. And I don't, hopefully you can see this here on the back. But basically, on this axis here is the amount of languages offered. And then on this axis here is the amount of countries that retailers are delivering to. Okay. Um, we have more research currently on retailers, but we're also expanding this footprint into travel and to other areas. But I think that the learnings are fairly analogous. What's interesting here is 
we see that UK retailers are offering, on average, the most country coverage. Okay? And an awful lot of that is driven by some of the very strong apparel businesses that are in the, that are in the UK online space. We see, however, German businesses offering, offering shipping to less countries, but actually offering more languages when they actually get there. Okay, so, so there is more internationalization via the individual languages. And you can see all the different things here. There's kind of a group, a, a group here, I guess. I guess probably the UK and, uh, and the US clustered together here. Uh, Germany, France, Nordics clustered together here. And then, uh, and then I guess kind of Netherlands offering a little bit less in terms of languages, but a, but, but a pretty good average, in a kind of a median average in terms of the amount of countries being delivered to. I think, that, I think that the point here is this is something where as you look to internationalize and you look to, to see what opportunities exist there, look to maybe some of the best in class, some of the UK apparel businesses, and also look at some of the German e-retail players here as well. And consider the implications of this for your business. Are you offering the right payment solutions? Are you offering the right customized um, uh, language solutions as well? And also, have you got a great payment solution in place? We're going to hear from eBay a little bit later on today. But that, this, is, this is an interesting piece of analysis here. If you're doing business, for example, in the Netherlands, um, then you need to be doing business with Ideal, uh, which is a payment provider there. We have, um, we have a very high usage of invoices in both Finland and also in Germany. If you look, however, at Denmark, a far higher preponderance of debit and credit cards. So a lot of different, a lot of different things going on here. Now, if you're exporting into all of these countries, of course, you will be well aware of this. Okay? But if you're just starting to think about some of these opportunities here, I think this, is, this offers us a really great perspective in terms, of, in, in terms of this. So just to sum up this particular section before I hand over to my time, I just want to say that we've got a global and not just a local opportunity. I think many businesses here in the room have grasped this, but I think we're only really on the cusp of doing this. And so it's not too late to be early. I think internationalization and export is a super opportunity. And Google is it help. We've got some skin in the game. We are willing to invest our resources in order to help your businesses win. Again, coming back to the theme of this, winning in challenging times. Export is, we think, a great way of winning in challenging times. Now, before I hand over to Martijn, I want to announce the winners of the Google Glass demo at 3 o'clock. So, if you could all do me a favor, look on your badges. If you have GG1 written on, written on your badge, at 3 o'clock, if you just go up to the back, then you will have an opportunity to have a Google Glass demo. If you have GG2, we will be offering a Google Glass demo tomorrow. Unfortunately, we haven't got enough. We have our Google Glass team in with us from the US. Uh, we can't, unfortunately, offer Glass demo to everybody, but we'll try and offer it to as many people as, as we possibly can. Okay. And with no further ado, I'd like to bring Sarah back on stage. Are you going to in introduce me, Sarah? Thank you very much.